Everybody, welcome back to another very exciting Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. How are you guys doing this morning? It's always so cool to see a bunch of people just in the chat interacting already just before I even come on. That's awesome. So I just want to say hi to Adobe Live, Eric, Harvey, Wolfgang, Sam, Valentine, Clarissa, Mia, Steve, Cecilia, Ralph, Ashley, thank you so much for joining me this morning. How are you guys doing today? Please let me know in the chat what um, place, part of the world you're watching from. I am in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's a beautiful morning and I'm so excited to have you guys here with me this morning. Claudi from Print My Soul, Alberto, Chloe, Mia, good morning. Thank you for being here with me. Before we get started, let me switch the screen over to my screen so that you guys could see what I'm looking at. And I'm going to go into the most important page for the whole Daily Creative Challenge, which is the behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Make sure that you click on this big blue button to take the challenge with me. Also, scroll down so that you can see the box that just unlocked today, box number seven, the challenge number seven box for March 25th, which is a compositing challenge. So we're gonna have some fun. We're going to create a superhero inspired composite using blending modes and adjustment layers. What you need to do if you want to follow along with my images is click on the get started button. This will open up a Dropbox link. You can click on the image there so you can see what it is. It's a Photoshop document. Make sure that you click on the da uh, download button and download it onto your computer. And I don't need that. Whatever that was, I don't need it. So the point is, is that I, I'm going to download this PSD file and I'm going to open it up and you'll see in Photoshop that we're going to have this document that contains this guy sort of powering up and we have layers that we're going to use to composite in some flames and some particles. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. You can follow along with that image, or if you like, you can take a selfie instead and then use the assets that I provided so you can composite onto your selfie. So you can just take like a, like a, a photo with your phone or have a friend or family member take a photo for you and you can work with that. Um, I would recommend practicing with this photo with me and then trying it on your own with your own photo and then after you're done, make sure that you go back into the behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop page. And in the number two step here where it says, how does it work? Click on community chat. That will open up Discord. This is where we all interact with each other, where we stay in contact with each other. And this is where today at 2 p.m., I believe, oh man, I wish I would have uh, wrote the time down. I'm pretty sure it was. it's, uh, it's 2 p.m. Actually, I have it written down here. Let me... <laughs> Let me confirm the time with you, but I believe it's at 2 p.m. today, uh, Pacific time. I'll be doing a live feedback review where you can come into the uh, into the voice uh, chat here, and I'm gonna be doing a live feedback review on the work that you guys have done, the work that goes under current challenge, and in this work. Uh, with this, with, with the stuff that you guys submit, I'll give you guys my opinion, how you can fix it, how you can improve it. If I see some questions, I'll answer it. So I'll be there today um, reviewing some of the work that you guys have done. So 2 p.m. Pacific today, and I hope to see you guys there. And this is the work that you guys were submitting from yesterday, the face match uh, challenge. This one looks great, by the way. Good job, Jane. I really like this one. So yeah, make sure that you come in here, submit your work, and that you can ask questions and see other people's work for inspiration. I'm there. The other Adobe Live team members are there. The Adobe mentors like Claudie, Tim, Voodoo Val, we're all here. So this is an excellent way for you to stay in touch with us and an excellent way for, for you guys to get feedback on your work. So make sure, again, download the file for today's stream, compositing, click on get started. Also, um, make sure that you create a project for your daily creative challenges. If you go into my Behance profile, by the way, feel free to follow me on Behance. Um, if you go into your Behance profile, you'll see that I've created a daily creative challenge project. And here I'm just doing the before and after 
shots of everything that we worked on. I'm going to update it with the last two challenges and today's challenges um, by the time we're done. So you're going to see all the work that I've made here. And if you want to click on the watch replay, I'll place the replays there as well. So make sure that you do something like that on for your projects. Maybe you want to do just one project or an entire project for all your different challenges. Up to you. But I highly recommend that you start using Behance as a place to share your work as well. So two places where you're going to share your work. Behance and Discord app. Cool. Let me see if there are any questions in the chat. I've been talking for a little too much. Awesome. We got Cool. So we have people from Australia. Nice. Ethiopia. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Cloudy wrote Mr. Meow. Yeah, that was the that was the cat, Mr. Meow. Awesome. All right, guys. So we're going to get started with this. Again, if you haven't already, make sure that you go into um, behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Scroll down into box number seven, the one for March 25th. And click on get started so you download the file that I'm going to be working with. So let's go ahead and get started. Cool. I'm noticing that I see some people from San Diego. Cool. Friends. Awesome. All right. So this is the photo that we're going to work with. And I have different elements here that I'm going to use to composite this uh, image and what I'm what I really want to do is create like a fire effect around his arms So maybe he's some sort of superhero and he has powers where he can light his arms on fire and then shoot fire out of his arms By the way, I'm interested to know what your favorite superhero is. My favorite superhero is spider-man. I actually grew up um, watching a whole bunch of spider-man cartoons and comic books and reading all that stuff. I still have comic books. I collected cards and I did a whole bunch of geeky comic book stuff as a kid. Actually, that's how I got into Photoshop. I used to draw Spider-Man a lot. So I decided to take my Spider-Man drawings into Photoshop and improve them that way, coloring them and adding filters and textures, all these sort of things. So because of comic books, I started using Photoshop. So this is uh, going to be a um, challenge that I'm going to enjoy because I like superheroes. I hope you guys like superheroes as well. But if you don't, at least learn the techniques and apply them to your projects because the techniques could be applied to anything. All right, let's check it out. Um, we got, oh, actually, yeah, who you guys like? <laughs> Wonder Woman, Thanos, <laughs> or likes Thanos. Thor, well, Th Thanos is a super villain, but I'll, I'll take that answer. We got Spider Man. Uh, Eric, yeah, 1 million. Thanks so much. Yeah, my YouTube channel reached 1 million yesterday. Thank you so much for that. Um, Steve also likes Spidey. Nice. Uh, Superwoman was awesome. All right, cool. Let's um, let's get started then. So this is the, <coughs> excuse me, this is the file that we're going to work with. And we're going to start with this one here, this texture. And I want to use this texture sort of like as a base to be around his body or his arms at least. And to define where that layer is going to be visible, I'm going to click on the background layer, the layer with our superhero. And I'm going to click on the quick selection tool and actually any of the selection tools will work. And I'm going to click on select subject. That's going to use Adobe Sensei, which is Adobe's artificial intelligence to make a selection out of whatever it thinks the main subject is. In this case, it does a fantastic job. If you're working with, with an image that it doesn't do this good of a job, you will have to refine it. In this case, I only have to refine it a little bit. For example, right here, like right in between his arm and his body. One of the ways of refining it is simply by pressing the Q key on the keyboard. That will apply a red overlay to the areas that are not selected. <clears throat> then. You can select the brush tool and make sure that you paint with black. If you paint with black, you're going to, on the image, paint with red. So you're creating that red overlay. So that means you're going to deselect those areas. So no longer selected. When I press the Q key again, the selection will now fill those areas that I painted in. So that's one way in which you can refine your selection. Once you've got your selection refined, you can just enable this layer and click on the layer mask icon. That will just create a layer mask in the shape of his body and you will get that texture effect. The cool thing now is that we can click 
on this layer uh, link icon, this little chain link icon here in the bottom right next to the layer, just unclick that. The reason that you want to do that is so that you can click on the layer. Notice how this focus, the white outline is on the layer thumbnail. And now with the move tool, you can click and drag and move it around. See that? Really cool. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control T, Command T on the Mac to transform. And I'm going to click on the corner handles and rotate this guy like so. I just want, it, I just want this texture to cover his arms. And you can scale it if you want to. In this case, I don't think I need to. I think I, the scale was pretty good. And click on the check mark to commit your changes. So now that you have this outline, we want to make sure that it sort of feels like it's really on his body. So we need to have shadows and highlights come out. And what I'm going to do is double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. From the layer style window, I can use this really cool option, the blend if, to show or reveal pixels based on their luminosity in the layer we're on or the layers below. So we don't really want to worry about the layer that we're on. If I wanted to, I could hide the bright areas of the texture. So just leave the cracks and that could be cool. Or I could hide the cracks by clicking and dragging on the black slider. So notice how like the cracks start disappearing, the darkest parts of the image. Or from the underlying layer, the layer below, I can bring in the shadows. See that? See how I'm bringing in the shadows? Or bring in the highlights. The cool thing is I can do all of these together to create a really cool effect. So I'll start with the underlying layer. So I'm going to click and drag to the right, but I'm also going to hold Alt on Windows, Option in the Mac, to split that point in half to create a smooth transition. See that? And I'm going to do the same thing for the highlights. Alt, click, Option, click on the Mac, split those apart, and just bring in a little bit of the highlights. Maybe not too much. Then. I really don't want too much of the highlights of the texture. So I'm going to click on the highlights of the texture again, hold Alt and Option, split those in half and just create a smooth transition. So you don't really see too much of that texture. I really want those cracks to pop out. Then I'll press OK. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is create a gradient map. And what a gradient map allows you to do is map colors onto the image based on its luminosity. In this case, I'm telling Photoshop, and you can take a look at the gradient here, at this gradient, I'm telling Photoshop, make the black pixels black, I'm sorry, make the black pixels white and the white pixels black. That's why it looks weird like that. So if I were to come in here and double click on this, I could, well, first of all, I don't want to do that. First of all, I want to make sure that I'm only affecting the, the, the superhero, our, our guy layer there. So I can click on this icon, the clipping mask icon, or you can press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac to create a clipping mask so that the filter only affects him. Next, I'm going to double click on here and I can start adding colors, right? So black could be a color, then maybe I could add like a dark red and then maybe a yellow and I'm going to have to fine tune. I'm, I'm just adding colors here that will make it seem like he's really hot and he's burning up, right? So I'm just going to adjust these guys accordingly. Something like that. And you can fine tune and adjust them any way that you want. Like so. So that looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to stick with that. Maybe give it a little more white so it's a little bit brighter there, something like that. And the cool thing about using this method is that you're working on destructively, so you can always come back and make adjustments if you want to. Cool. So now what I want to do is I only want this texture effect to only affect his, his arms. I don't really want his chest to be affected or, or the rest of his body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a group. And I'm going to place these two layers inside of that group like so. So now they're inside of a group. Next, I'm going to create a layer, uh, excuse me, a layer mask. And then I'm going to hold control on Windows command on the Mac and click on the layer mask thumbnail to load his body as a selection once again. And what I'm going to do is on this layer mask, actually what I needed to do beforehand and I think it'll work. Let me let me undo that. What I need to do is select the layer mask first and click on invert. Then 
I need to hold Control on Windows, Command on Mac, and click and load it as a layer, as a selection. And now with this layer mask black and the selection active, I can go into the brush tool and paint with white and selectively paint where I want those pixels to come back. See, I'm selectively painting those areas by painting with white using the brush tool. And obviously I'm not being too precise on the edges in your projects. Please take a little more time. I'm noticing that I have about seven more minutes. So I'm trying to get it as close as I can without being too precise. So something like that. So now he's got these cool cracks on his arms. Control D, Command D to deselect. See that? Before and after. So notice how I used a layer mask on the layer to control the overall texture, and then I put it in a group. And the only reason I put it into a group was so I could use another layer mask to selectively show what was in the layers below. But anyway, that's something that you can try, and I think it's just an efficient way of work and having more control. <clears throat> now, um, we're gonna use blending modes to basically apply these flames onto his body. And the way that we're gonna do that is simply by using a blending mode that hides bright pixels. I'm sorry, a blending mode that hides dark pixels and keeps bright pixels. And to do so, we're going to like any one of these blending modes here in the lighten category. See how it says lighten on top and then there's a line below it and that's a category of blending modes. All these blending modes hide black and keep the bright pixels. In this case, green is probably the best choice. So I can select screen, and now I can just click and drag this layer, press Control T, Command T to transform, and I can scale that in accordingly. I could rotate it by right-clicking and selecting flip horizontal so that it matches this arm better. Another cool thing that you can do is, once you get it more or less where you want it, you can go into image, uh, I'm sorry, edit, puppet, warp, and then just click on the image here, add these points, I'll disable the mesh. You can disable the mesh by clicking on this checkbox and then just click and drag these points to make it fit your superhero, like so. Pretty cool stuff, right? And I can click on the check mark to commit the changes. One problem that you may have is notice how the background wasn't completely black, so you can see a little bit of light in there. All you need to do now is go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and you can just make the image darker. See that? See how I made it darker and that edge disappear? And you can adjust the contrast if you like to control the intensity of the flame. See that? Totally up to you how you control that. And what I can do now is duplicate that layer, <clears throat> Control T, uh, Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. Press Control T to transform, right click, select, flip horizontal. And since the arm is almost in the same position, I could probably distort this layer to, to match it a little bit. Like so, I'm probably gonna need to use the, the same uh, Puppet Warp filter again for this. Edit, Puppet Warp, add some points here. When at a point here and then just drag it over in like so. Just make sure it covers the arm like that. Pretty cool stuff. Awesome. So now I have the arms on fire and notice that I have other overlays here and I'm probably not gonna have time to use all of them but I do have one, yeah, this one here. It has these sparks, same thing. I'm gonna select it, go into screen and I can just place the sparks anywhere that I like. I can transform it, Control T, Command T to transform, and then just make sure that the sparks sort of match the composite. Oh wow, <laughs> battery running low. I didn't realize that I didn't plug in my, my computer, but no worries, I have my cable right here and I'm gonna plug it right in. So there we go, we got power again, no worries about that. Um, so, <clears throat> with the, the little sparks are you gonna run into the same issue where you're gonna have the light pixels. So you need to go into image, adjustment, levels, and darken those pixels up. See that? Uh, let me move it to the side so that you can see. Drag to the right, 
No, no, see that? See how they disappear? And I only keep the sparks? So that's all you want to do. And also there's a hard edge at the bottom here so you can create a layer mask and you can paint with black to hide those pixels so they blend better like so. And now it looks really good. Let me double click to the uh, double click on the hand tool so you can fit it to screen and you can select the move tool and hold alt on windows option on the Mac and click and drag that layer to duplicate it and you can keep placing the duplicates all over the composite so that he has sparks flying out of his hands. Let me zoom in so you can see the result. See all, see all those sparks just flying out of his body now? Much, much, much better. Pretty cool stuff. Another thing that uh, you guys could do is double click on the hand tool to fit it to screen and you can hold shift and select all these different layers and put them into a group. Control G, Command G on the Mac. So that's one group. That's another group. And I have an extra image here that I don't have time to use, but you can use that one as well to create more random flames all throughout his body. And what I want to do now is, now that I'm done with my composite, I want to select the topmost layer, hold shift, click on the bottommost layer, right click, and convert it into a smart object because now I can treat this as a single image and we're going to use our very good friend, the camera raw filter. And we're just going to enhance this image with the camera raw filter. Don't worry about the layers on top, that's okay. Like this transparency is not gonna show in our final result, but I can warm up the image. I could also adjust the highlights if I need to, the shadows, all these different things to make the image pop and stand out more, maybe increase the vibrance. And in this case, I might wanna add a vignette just so that he's really hot in the center, he's really sticking out, and also I notice how the background has a lot of noise and no noise in these new areas. So I'm just going to add a little bit of grain to like try to make sure that everything in the composite has grain. And why not? We'll sharpen it a bit. So let me just increase the sharpening and increase the masking. If you hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac on the masking slider, you're going to see an overlay, just like a regular layer mask. Anything that's white will have the sharpening effect to it. Anything that is black will not. So let me just drag it up so that the background has almost no sharpening applied to it and only the foreground does. Uh, only the foreground does. So once again, that's holding Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac. Um, <laughs> Claudia from Print My Soul wrote, grain equals JR signature. Yeah, it's pretty much like the last thing that I always do on my composites. And you can press OK. One of the great things about working with smart objects is that you can work non-destructively. Smart objects allow you to apply adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations, and you can always come back and edit them. Like I could always double click on camera raw and it'll bring up the filter and I could edit it if I want to. And also if I double click on the thumbnail, it'll open up a new tab. And in this new tab, I can make adjustments to, to the composite if I wanted to. And one of the things that you might want to do is remember on, I think it was challenge number three, I think it was, but the compo the color matching with curves, we did a, a technique where we created a layer and we paint it with like a really bright color, like a bright yellow. We can do try the same yellow here and see how that works. Maybe even a little bit brighter. And we could paint over the layer like so, and then Double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. We can select um, color dodge as our blending mode. Uncheck transparency sh uh, shapes layers to get that different blend. It looks much hotter. See that? See how hot that looks? And I can reduce the fill opacity to not make it too hot, too bright. And then obviously I can continue painting on that layer on these other areas to try to make you know, make it seem hotter. So obviously spend your time. I have about 30 seconds, which is why I'm going so fast. When you're done, you can save this smart object and the changes will automatically update on the camera raw filter. See that? See how we got that hot, bright highlight on his neck? So I would recommend just adding appropriate highlights all over his body because if you have fire, you're obviously going to have a, you're going to have a light source. Anyway, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this challenge. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Make sure that you go into behands.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Click on the big blue button to follow me 
and get notifications via the Creative Cloud app. Make sure that you join the community chat so that you could go into the Discord page and upload the current challenge here where it says current challenge just above my head here just now and post your superhero work. I can't wait to see it. Remember that I'll be back at 2 p.m. Pacific on Discord live. You won't see my face, but you'll hear my voice and I'll give you my thoughts on your work. Thank you guys so much. Let me know in the chat if you enjoyed today's stream. I can't wait to be back again tomorrow morning to show you another Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Stick around for, I believe we have Terry White doing more compositing right after me. So stick around. I'll be, go take a bathroom break, a coffee break, and come right back. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.